What up, guys? Welcome back to another episode. <laughs> I'm so glad I'm sitting over here. No, I'll take that, but uh, Keith Jardine's punch. Like, he's being uh, nice. Open hands. Nice. Nice. He's being nice. To I know he could do it, but he's being nice. To another episode of the Barber Gay Talk Show. I'm I didn't Mark. know bass players hit that way. And open palm is not nicer. You're being nice. I know, but have you ever seen Pine Craze fights? No. Have you ever heard of the ba- Boss Rootin'? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So oh, Boss Pancration, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Pancrase are open palm strikes. I, I have 20 fights in Pancrase. So close fist to the body, kicks anywhere, all submissions are in, but open palm to the face. We knocked all sorts of fools out. Can you My, show, show me what no. it looks like? Yeah. <laughs> My brother was also an open palm guy. Like he wouldn't punch somebody, but like he would take this gigantic meat hook and be like, just whack. Whoop. What about that new slapping stuff going on? I don't know, whatever. Yeah. You know what I mean? like, yeah, they're knocking fools out right. every single but show. But they're taking it. Yeah. They're not defending it. Yeah. Okay, so we actually have a topic, even though um, I got carried away because it's really fun. I'm going to um, go bruised titty now. <laughs> what was your diet like for uh, your military? And what was your diet like for fighting professionally? And was there any similarities? Oh, they, your, they're very, very, very similar. What's your body weight uh, when you fought? I fought at 185, but my body weight was the same. Okay. And you're now... Yeah. 210, yeah. 210. Like you walked around at 185 or are you... No, 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 no. I was a 210, 220 guy that fought at 185. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's pretty normal. Yeah. yeah. Very typical for, you know, like Luke, um, Jacques Array, Anderson, um, you know, they're 210, 220 yeah. guys that fight at 185. What's Usman walk around that? Oh, man. That dude's jacked. Yeah. And he's six feet tall. <laughs> that dude is away. jacked. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he, he's probably... Uh, Michael Chandler, I was just with him last Michael week. Michael Chandler's... Big as fuck for a lightweight, right? No. no, he's fighting at 170. His next fight's against Conor McGregor, and he's fighting at oh. 170. But his old ones were 155, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. I'd have no idea how he made 155. And now, I mean, he's 200 pounds, and yeah. he's about to fight Conor McGregor. You know, like, we're, we're having sushi in the Pachanga in Temecula, California, and, um, and like, I, I order, like, five, six rolls, and he has a bunch of food, and then he's, like, over here stealing my food, and I was like... <laughs> Don't you have a fight, man? Like, don't you have to make weight? He's like, I don't know. I'm fighting at welterweight now. I mean, he's jacked at, and he's fighting at welterweight in 200 pounds. It's a freak. Wow. Um, diet, just view all special special operations guys as like Olympic athletes. So their diets are like Olympic athletes. Um, Except it's from MREs? No, we... we <laughs> Special operations get it pretty good. Why do you good. eat your MRE oh, that's like this? True, that's yeah. true. Because <laughs> he just pretends he's yeah, what is like he? a little he's, tiny rice. Yeah, he's starving. Like, <laughs> he's starving. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, like my little teriyaki bowl. <laughs> <laughs> they, uh, like MREs you get in training. I you see. Know, but not often w- w- was I, unless I was like out, out. You know. But if you go to the big bases in, in Baghdad, you oh. know, if you're in uh, Afghanistan and you're at Kandahar or Bagram, uh, like those are big bases that are facilities that are ran by KBR. You know, you have like French chefs in there. You oh, know, so you're eating. Yeah, you. I mean, you could you you get good. Isn't food. that like a discipline issue then? Like, if it's so good, you kind of have to like go. I can't. That's eat that. your marine mind. No. What do you guys do? Yeah. What's your mind? My my mind's like <laughs> eat whatever. Feed the machine. You know. Yeah, yeah. Except yeah, like, you don't eat pies. Yeah, you don't put like eighty seven unleaded into a jet. That's true. That's how you think. Let's go get we're some fucking, ice cream. We're fucking Formula One cars on we, this side of the right. couch. Yeah. We got me, Dairy Queen. You're eating Give peach cobbler, you. you pussy. We got Dairy Queen yesterday, and it I filled did it. my workout not this in morning. This, not in this Formula One. Oh, so, I mean, are they helping you Do you, you track protein, though? Do yeah. you like go like, yeah, like let me get extra Is there nutritionists portions? involved in the game? Yeah. I mean, we, we, we have, um, we have if, you, if you go to Fort Bragg, North Carolina, and you go to the Thor Training Center, uh, it is... Like the gym that we just went into, you'll walk in there and you're like, what are they, they train world-class oh, athletes here? Like, is this only for Olympians? No, that's that's for soft guys. Oh, wait, isn't there a, like a special forces, like a performance center that has strength and conditioning, nutrition, and all that all wrapped up into that's one? Right. And yeah. is that the Thor training center? That, that, that is the, the physical portion. They, they have a mental health division. They have a diet division. Oh, cool. You know, they have a sleep division. You know, like they're issuing guys um, those those rings yeah. that track their sleep. They're yeah. doing like studies on them. They're taking blood samples on dudes. Like it is, uh, I mean, like. What level are wow. you at to get there? Like special ops only? Yeah. Yeah. So once you're there, then they take care of you like you're an Olympic athlete and they track almost every aspect of your life? They are Olympic athletes. They yeah. are. I see. I mean, these, if you walk into a team, they look like Greek Adonis gods. Yeah. You know, um, 
they're they're freaks. And I mean, for, for the the gates that they have to get through to be there in that room are Olympic level athlete things. So you could probably argue harder. Yeah. Yeah. So the uh, and then the things that are required of them to stay on the team, like the amount of training that you do, I mean, the, like it on a Thursday or a Friday. If we're gonna do like an FMP on Thursday and then a stress test on Friday, What's a FMP, uh, a full mission profile. Like we're gonna do an infill, a walk to a target, a hit on a target, um, do SSC on the target, and then exfil off the target. That's maybe a 12, 14,000 calorie day. You wow. know, like and, if I was wearing a heart rate monitor. And and um, how much distance are you guys covering doing all that stuff? Six miles, maybe yeah. walking with a in. shit ton of like yeah. fifty pounds. Yeah, maybe you're. It depends on your specialty. Maybe you're halloing in. Maybe you're scubaing in. You know, like who who knows? Like what that each of those teams like. That's a Thursday, and then Friday they go <laughs> in and do a stress test. So maybe they do the UBRR. So they do ten events. They do max push ups, max pull ups, max uh, speed for a sh- shuttle sprint, um, rope climb. Uh, so like ten of it. Like we did what we did today, but we only did seven. Like that is very similar to felt a UB- like ten. Yeah, no, it wasn't. Felt like fifteen. <laughs> and then at the end of the UBR, you go do a five mile run for time, in a sub forty minute pace. Shit. After your ten events, and there's your score, and you immediately, maybe you, you do your five mile run to the range, and your stuff's waiting there, and then you're gonna do a shooting event that you're scored on. That's a Friday. Is Welcome. it like a pass fail? Is it like a? This is just being on the team. That's just practice. Well, it, it's no, it, it's pass fail. Like if you are not good enough to be on the team, you yeah. don't stay on the team. Yeah. Does that happen often? Yeah. So if you yeah. fail, you get dropped out of the team. Man, like, so when I got to a team, the uh, they opened the door, they looked at me, and they took my bags and they threw out the door and they closed the door, and I stood there for like a day. Just based off looks, they're like, I don't want this guy on my team. He's like, this is, you're a child. They thought you were the bass playing with a cool haircut. Yeah. Bastards. Oh, shit. Yeah. Shit. I, just, I just stood there like, I don't know what to do. And then they let me in and they told me to take everything in the gym. And we like the sick gym. Move everything that was on this wall, like the rack, the all the dumbbells. And put it over on this wall. And then... Uh, I was just playing games. And then, to, and then, like an hour later, they made me move it all back. Yeah, how much of that is like they actually didn't think you could be good enough to be on the team, and how much of it is like a psychological test? Do you want to be on the team? Yeah, they're just testing. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah how bad do you want I, this? The, post nine eleven, if you walked into the barracks, and you were going to ask every single guy in the cot that's about to wake up and go do an event that they must pass, um, if you offered them a million dollars to get out. They wouldn't even bat an eye, and they'd probably try to kill you. I'm not joking. You would have to take a lead pipe, and you'd have to break the legs of anybody in that room to not to quit. Yeah. There's just there's no possible way that to do it, and um, that carries with you. That's to me why it's so beyond athletics. Because you'll hear contracts written for NFL and NBA players that if they come in ten pounds over playing weight for summer camp. Like they have to give them a money incentive to lose ten pounds. It's crazy, right? Yeah. Like that's where, like, yeah. And those guys are freaks, mentally, yeah. physically, whatever. But then, what is this? You know, like yeah. freak of freak of freaks. Yeah. I, I think like my my buddy Chris Atkins or um, Michael Zinga or Mike Keller. Uh, you'd had to, you'd have to have killed them to make them stop. Like, there's nothing that you could have done, nothing you could have offered to not let them succeed in becoming a Green Beret and then going on to do what they have done in their incredible careers. Yeah, so would you say like is, uh, so the diets are similar, Is the training is just as hard on both? Just as hard but different. You know, like um, on the teams, you know, we'd fight a couple of times a week, we'd kickbox, we'd wrestle, we'd box, we'd bring in Hoist Gracie, you know, to the unit. We'd, um, you know, but then you'd also bring in like, the current three gun world champion and go train with him. And then you'd bring in like this um, famous long distance precision rifle competitor. And then, you know, so it was like always trying to develop your skills to just be a 1% improvement off of wherever you were in that modality. Was UFC similar? Cause UFC is a combination of a bunch of mm-hmm. skills, obviously. Yeah. 
They bring in like Greco dudes and bring in judo dudes. You know, the match that we were on, we got like Satoshi Ishii that's teaching some judo stuff. Then today you saw Nicholas Morgalelli teaching gi jujitsu, right? And then like Gordon comes in, he like flies in a two time Olympian to teach freestyle wrestling. So it's like, yeah. And if you're already one of the best, yeah, that's the only way to get better. That's right. Do you feel, um, like Dead inside, hmm? nothing. <laughs> no, like he the, said, no more darkness. <laughs> Do you feel like the, like, the the patriotism and doing something for something greater than you is is, is that a more powerful motivator? Because I feel like in the fighting realm, it's more like like in the NFL athletes, it's more for you or feed my family or whatever. This is my profession. But when you're fighting for your country, do you think that that kind of like pre workout almost is able to like power you so yeah, much like more? Yeah, like love of the game. Yeah. So it's just like, why do you play basketball? Because I go, I think you go to a lot of NBA guys and offer them a billion dollars. Would you quit right now? And a lot would probably say no because they do have some love of the game. Yeah. But the 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 heart is different from what With, y'all do. Yeah. 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 And the um, it's intrinsic that they want to be the best versions of themselves, and their commitment to these ideas that are better than themselves is why that they're there. They're not there for the money, right? Like mm. um, mo most of these guys could go on to do anything they want. You know, you'll get like Matt Best and, and Evan Hafer starting Black Rifle. You saw, you see Jocko, right? You, you like, th these these are the, the men that I know that then Andy Stumpf, like they go on to to start any business that they want, making millions of dollars. And you, you see it time and time again. You see uh, guys going to the NFL coming from special operations. You see guys going on to be the incredible stoic authors. And then, you know, the going to Congress, Mike Waltz and Morgan Luttrell and Dan Crenshaw. Um, so, like, it's all in there and it's intrinsically in there. And they want to be the best version of themselves and they want to contribute and they want to give back and they're continuing to do it, even whatever, whatever thing they go on to do. It's, uh, man, I, th I think it's just like part of their DNA. But serving something more important or greater than yourself is the greatest thing that you could possibly do. That's very, very cool. Thank you guys for watching. That was not a dark one. That was a heavy kind of happy and heavy, but very was the happy ending deep one. I like the deep ending. Okay. Deep. Ending. Yeah, it was deep. I was it's like, hard to go deep oh. sometimes. Why? It depends what you're packing. I'm good at going deep. <laughs> maybe, maybe I don't know. Okay, see you guys later. Bye bye.